Hello and welcome to Master Gardening. I'm your host Bud Kwok and three guests today, Tammy, what we're going to talk about. Yes, bees, hunt of bees. We're here at Bud's apiary. You better step back a little bit, Dan. They're starting to, get, starting to go forage. That's it. Dan's a little bit scared of this morning, but we're going to talk about all the great things that the honeybees do for the farmer on top of the honey. We'll be right back. Okay, once again, we're here at Bud's Honeybee School. And I'm using this chart because I use this in my presentations a lot. It, it describes it a lot better than I can with words. Pictures worth a thousand words, right? Okay. Dan, can you get this right here? These are the three types of honeybees. You've got your queen, and all she does is she mates one time when she first is born, and then after that, all she does is lay eggs for three or four years, and then she dies. It takes 16 days for her to hatch once she's been laid. Okay, worker, that's female bees. Let's skip over her and go to the male bee. All he does, he's the male bee, all he does is he mates with the queen, not of his own hive though, 20 feet above the ground in the spring, exactly 20 feet. He mates with the other queens. Sometimes, many times they don't get the mate, but then they eat, sleep, and that's it. No work. The worker bee, that's the female bee, she does it all. She does everything. Does everything from over here, Dan, the first thing she does, the first one or two days after she's born, she takes care of the small, well, she cleans out the cells and, and, and makes the cells and cleans out the cells. Then she takes care of, for three to five days, she takes care of the larger larvae and pupa. And then after the next six to 11 days, she takes care of the small ones. She becomes more experienced. She can take care of the small larvae. And then she takes care of the queen. She cleans the hive. And then she goes out and works the foraging. And then the last thing she does is she protects the hive. She stays around the hive. Then she dies. If, her, if she becomes incapacitated or, or say her wings get damaged or whatever, they throw her off the edge. That's the, that's the uh, retirement plan for the, for the females. The males, at, at the end of the year when they're getting ready for winter and they've had their honey stored up, they kick all the, the drones or the males out and then that's it. They don't uh, overwinter with the hive. There's no males in the hive. Another bad retirement plan. Okay, that's the life cycle. And you can get a picture of here of these cells. These are all exactly the same size. They're all octagons and they're all cleaned. They clean them, they polish them. That's where they store their, their, their small bees, the honey, the pollen, uh, that's, that's their storage area in their hives for all their different things. That's made out of beeswax. That's the same thing that we make beeswax candles out of. That's the most, not only the most famous, but the most valuable uh, wax that you can make candles out of. Back in the old days, the only people could have beeswax candles were the Catholic Church. They had all the money. Uh, the most common people used blubber and stuff like that that smoked and smelled. But then after uh, the beekeepers took over, the bee uh, wax became very much more popular and easier to obtain, and now everybody could have beeswax candles. They're pretty expensive, though. Okay, Tammy, are you ready to go out to the hive? Okay, this is where it gets dangerous, Dan. You better put your suit on. We'll see you back out the hives. I have my white suit on and ready to go. Okay, we're at the hives, and uh, a couple things. You can see this one's a lot bigger than those other two over there. Well, I had four good hives last spring, last summer, and then over the winter, three of them disappeared. And I think it's one of those things they're talking about, the, uh, the, 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 the disappearing of the bee, honeybees, not just the normal mites, diseases, foul brood that attacks them all the time because there were no bees in my hive when I discovered them this, this spring. I think it's the new herbicide that makes the bees lose, or makes any insect lose their memory. They're not talking about much about it, but I think, I'm convinced that's what it is. They lose their memory, don't come back to the hive. They go off to get something from a flower and don't come back. 
So those two hives, I had three and one didn't make it this, this spring. They'll be good next year, but right now they're not going to produce any honey. This is the only hive that, that made it through the winter and it's going to produce honey. There should be honey in almost, there's four supers up here. There should be honey in all of these. Okay, Dan, this bottom board here slanted right here is called a landing board. You don't need that, but it gives the bees a little bit more room to land when they're flying in, especially when it's really crowded like that place, that one over there. And Martha Stewart uses these, and I had to say, do you have exactly what Martha Stewart had? I, I, I made this because it looks like Martha Stewart's also. Then you have the bottom board right here, and that's the landing board, the bottom of the hive. They go in there, and there's a little platform under here. That's all it is. Then you have these two containers. These are called deep hive bodies. Okay, those two are where the family is raised. All the brood is raised in here. This is where the queen works. This is where the honey and the pollen is stored for the bees. This is all theirs from there down. Okay, then as they fill this up and more and more bees are hatched out, the queen knows there's a nectar flow somewhere. She's hatching out more bees. They'll go from maybe 2,000 bees in the wintertime to 60 to 80,000 in a good nectar flow. They will produce more bees. More honey, sorry. <laughs> more honey. So I put these small containers on top, and as I put them on, they fill them up. They fill this one up, I put another one on. They fill that up, I put another one on. On and on and on, okay? This hive did really well. Okay, we're not going to touch this honey and what have it down here. This is what they're going to use to make it through the winter next year. And it's, it's full first. It's full. Now, if I hadn't put these extra ones on, what would have probably happened was they would have probably swarmed. That's how bees multiply. They don't multiply by having more bees raised. They multiply by dividing the, the hive and making a whole new hive somewhere. That's where you see them out in trees and in barrels and walls and garages and attics. What happens is it gets too crowded in here. The bee says, the queen bee says, hey, we gotta, we gotta divide. She takes 60% of the best bees with her and they leave. And the, then the hive makes a new queen with what's called magic royal jelly. Royal jelly is a regurgitation of the bees to feed the queen, to feed the larvae, to feed the baby bees. But when they need a new queen, what they can do is they can only give nothing but the royal jelly to those larvae, those specific look, good looking large larvae. They'll feed nothing but the royal, royal jelly for at least four or five days and that triggers that to become a queen. It's kind of complicated, but that's, that's the way it is, Dan. Okay, so if I hadn't kept adding these, they would half of these bees would have left and gone somewhere else and then I wouldn't have got any honey out of it. When the swarm leaves, they go to a nearby bush or tree for 24 hours, sometimes 48, but 24 hours. The queen lands on the branch, and all the rest of the bees make like a football around her, protecting her. Okay, If the beekeeper can, finds that out, he can go out there and knock those bees into another hive body, and then he can have another hive of bees. The queen, if you get the queen in there, the rest of the bees will come. If you don't do that, what that group of bees does sends out sentries to find a new home. When those sentries come back, they do a dance for the queen. The queen decides from the dance which one's the best place to go, and then they all head off to that location. And if you're lucky enough, sometimes you'll see like a swarm of cloud of bees going from one neighborhood to the next, and that's what that is. It's a swarm of bees. Very interesting. Then you'll have two, not 80,000. Really, that, that 80,000 is just one, one, one beehive. Then you have two beehives. That's what they call them when they multiply. Okay, inside these, and we'll see this when we make, when we extract the honey, there's what's called frames. They're long, like little books. They're inside there with a honeycomb on it. Some of this beeswax here that the bees use to store their honey and their brood and their pollen. And we'll, we'll show you more about that when we get inside. So then you have an outer cover. These are called supers, little supers, shallow supers, outer cover. And this one so happens has an inner cover down here, and I'll show you when we get to it why I put it down there. Normally this is up here underneath this. Okay, Dan, it's time for me to get my hat and gloves on. We're gonna get inside this baby, take their honey. They want us to do it, I promise you, Tammy, we're not gonna hurt them. We'll be right back. We're 
ready to take the top of this thing off, but we've got some equipment to put on first. Dan's got my white suit on. Dan's got my white suit on. And I've got this white shirt on because bees don't like to sting white. Believe it or not, they've been test run and they like to sting black in dark places. They go for your eyes and your ears in the dark places. They don't like to sting white, so I've got white on. Protective gloves. Dan's got some protective gloves on. I've got my hive tool for opening the tool up. I've got my brush in case there's some bees in the way and I want to get rid of them. This is a real soft brush. Hopefully we won't have to use that. The most important thing we got today though, to heck with the clothes and the mail and all this stuff, is the smoker. And you've heard lots about the smoker. It calms the bees down. I'm using pine needles, which I have a pine tree right here, which really works out good. They say that uh, corn cobs do real well in the smoker. I never had any luck with corn cobs. But when, once we smoke these bees, you probably won't be able to hear it, but Dan and I will, and Tammy, because Tammy's gonna, well, you're not gonna be over here, are you, Tammy? <laughs> <laughs> Tammy's hiding behind a tree! You can hear the, the, uh, the uh, sound of the bees goes from mm, real calm, you can tell they're calming down. This going real good. I'm gonna sneak over here, put a little smoke on them, and you say, why does this smoke work? Well, it, it's not scientific, but the beekeepers think that the bees think there's a, there's a forest fire going on. And oh, by the way, that means we're gonna die, or we have a long trip to make. So we better stop and eat some of this good old honey while we're at it. So they stop and start eating the honey. And don't worry about what I'm doing. They're more concentrated on the things that they're doing. This shirt is so thin that I may take off running in a minute. If that's the case, you know who to call, Tammy. I gave you the numbers. Okay. All right, here we go. What we're going to do, we're going to take these four tops off. These are where the, my honey is. We're going to take them around front, and I'm going to get the honey out of them. You better run, Frank. Okay, we're going to pop this top off. Hopefully there's no bees in here. Not very many, anyway. Take that one off, and that one doesn't have any honey in it. That's the last one I put on there. Okay, here we go. <coughs> that one's full of honey. That one's full of honey. You can see the honey right here on top. That honey, Dan, that's good stuff there, okay? And then this one's it's full of honey also. Okay. Back about three days ago, this is, a, this is the inner board, inner top. About three days ago, I went and put this thing on here. It's called a bee escape. The bees can go down through there and they go through a little intricate thing. There's a spring in there. They can get out of the hive, but they can't get back up in. So there's not very many bees in here. Normally there'd be 30,000 bees in there. Not much fun to work with. So I put that bee escape on there, which I don't need anymore really. Put this back on. They're ready for winter. Okay, now I gotta get these to the greenhouse because these bees smell that honey and they're going for it. So I'm gonna pack these to the, to the greenhouse and then we'll go out front and we'll extract it. Ah. Normally I'd have about 10 times as much honey as we got this year, but I lost those three hives last year. And that knocked me down, but still I'm gonna get probably 10 gallons of honey out of this. Be right back. Grab one of these, Tammy. The key to success, 
books, libraries, hive management, how to do it book beekeeping. There's a hundreds of them out there and they're free at the library. So get you some if you're interested in starting one hive. Everybody needs to have one hive, right? Tam, you're gonna go home and get one, right? Okay, this is the extractor and it's hotter than you know what out here today. And I'm getting a little, poor Dan, he hadn't put that suit on. This is an extractor. All it is is a centrifuge. I hope it works today. Stainless steel. It throws the honey up against the sides of the uh, container. It all goes down. We have a spout on the side. Bingo, bango, bongo. Okay. We're all in for this. Tammy, I might need your help cranking this, you think? That'd be really, that's a good idea, Dan. I'm glad you came up with that. It's the old hive tool again. Remember I talked to you about, oh, that's not a good one. Let's put this over here. Okay. Okay. Here's a good one right here. These are the called frames, and they have that beeswax cylinders in them, that uh, little cells that the bees fill up with honey. There's the cell right there. They fill these cells up with honey. And they let it sit there until it, uh, the water evaporates so it gets a certain consistency of the honey. Then they cap it. See these white things right here? These are caps. They put a, a small layer of wax over top of that cell and that cell will last forever. There's only one food in the world that doesn't go bad, Tam. You know what that is? Honey. Honey! <laughs> yes. They found honey in the Egyptian tombs in the pyramids. Still good. Okay, now, how are we going to get that honey out of there? Hey, back up just a little bit, Dan. We've got to cap, cut those caps off. So this is my decapper. Okay, I've got a hot knife here. I'm just going to take a very small layer of those caps off of there. Look at that honey. Oh my. Other side. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in my extractor. And this one is a two frame extractor. Put one in there, get one more. Oops. Okay, let's try this. Take the caps off. I'm gonna get as little as you can off of there. Look at all that honey, Dan. Ooh la la. Done died and gone to heaven. Okay, this one didn't fill out 100%. They make a scratcher where you can scratch those and get those off without taking too much honey. I don't like them because the honey that's collected in here, we're going to save. Okay, put this other one in here. Oh my, it's hot, Dan. Jeez. Okay, now we're going to take this. Spin it around. See the honey going out into the edges of the container. Okay. Then we got to get the other side. Flip these around. Again. Okay. 
There's two, only 300 more to go. Do a couple more. Gosh, look at that honey. You can't get this in store unless it's just a beekeeper because they process honey. They boil it and pasteurize it and add stuff to it. The only way you can get this kind of honey is from a beekeeper. That represents flowers in your yard, my yard. Take it over here, one more. One more quick one, Dan. Oh, those are heavy. This is the exciting part, Tammy. Harvesting. And you better be ready to get a little honey on you. <laughs> when I get done, I've got honey from the garage to the kitchen, bathroom, the floors are all honeyed up. <sighs> well worth it though. Okay, here we go. This is the part I wanted Tammy to help me with. Build your muscles. Flip them around. Okay. Well, next year we'll put these back in there, and if you see that, these are little cells. They're kind of nasty right now, but guess what? The bees will go in there and clean that and polish that, and it'll look like gold. Be all before they get started on it, they'll clean it all up. And by the way, they'll eat that honey that's left in there too. Okay, now Dan, this stuff is falling down to the bottom. Take a look at that, Dan. Next thing we do, and normally by the time I do this, I've got about three inches of honey in the bottom of it. That's just two, two right there. Take this. And there's pieces of wax and different things that are in the honey right now. The next thing we do, we start filtering it and straining it. This is a set of coarse filters and then finer filters and some people do, oh my goodness. Filter it down through there. You notice it's filtering through here, I guess the coarse things out and then it goes down through another really fine filter and Normally I'll do this a couple times. And then you say, well, what's all this, these caps over here, Dan? These caps that we cut off, it looks like oatmeal with maple syrup on. It looks like good enough to eat, doesn't it? Well, it is. It's really good, but you get chewy. We'll take this and strain this all out. First of all, I can pour, open this and I'll get the honey that drained to the bottom of that. Get that out. And then this, I will put in a pot and put it in the microwave for a couple minutes. It'll melt all down till it's liquid. Then when I dry it, when I, I, mean, I, mean, I can cool it off, the, the wax goes to the top, the pollen's in the middle, and the honey's on the bottom. So I break this off the top of the container and the honey's on the bottom there. That's the honey. I usually go ahead and feed that to the bees because they like it. And then you can scrape this pollen off and then remelt it, run it through a sieve, and you've got beeswax. Okay, and this is some of my beeswax. It's almost pure gold. Melt that down in a, mic in a microwave for a few minutes, and then pour it into my beeswax candle holders, which guess what, we had that ice storm. 
I don't have any candles left. <laughs> All the candles were used up. Okay, so we got the candle wax. We got the honey. Some people use the pollen that they steal off the bees. Some people use the royal jelly. But the number one thing is, what do you think it is, Tammy? Pollination. <laughs> one third of the crops from pollination, that's right. Okay, then we pour this into a container that has a drip spout on it. And Tammy, did you spill my, uh, did you steal my glass jar I had out here? But anyhow, let's pretend we have a glass jar there. <laughs> pretend. I had a couple out here. After we filtered it a few times, and it comes out of here, see? And that's last year's honey. It's a little bit thick. I fill my jars up, put, them, put the lids on them, and give them to my neighbors and my relatives for Christmas. And maybe Tammy and Dan today. Yeah, there's, there's some of last year's honey. It's a little thick. You put that in the microwave. If you get honey from a store, it, won't never, it will never get thick. It's like sugar. And it costs a little bit more because it's easier to handle in the kitchen. But if you'll take that, take the metal off, of course, put it in the microwave for a minute and a half, it'll be all pure just like it originally was when you bought it. It melts all that. Okay. Any questions, Tammy? We when talk do about I get some? Huh? When do I get some? You get some as soon as we get done here. And I'm going to take a shower. It's hot out here. I don't care what you say. It's getting ready to rain. It's 95 degrees. <sighs> Fresh honey. This honey was in my hives a couple hours ago. Thanks for watching. I'm Bud Quok, your host for Master Gardening. Oh, look at that, Dan. The fruits of our labor. See you next time. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my. Almost got too much honey on it. Beach chart on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do that again, Dan. Here we go. <laughs> oh, boy, uh, no, that doesn't go. You can't use that. They're eating my flesh. <laughs> Run for your lives. Here, let me get you, Dan. <laughs> that'll, that'll keep them off of you. <laughs>